Hey everybody, hope everybody's doing good. Um, yeah, I know it's been a while since I uh, posted a video. Um, I'm just going to be, this is this is actually going to be a kind of a learning uh, video for me. I'm going to be trying to edit this video uh, in some way, shape, or form, like adding, um, uh, what do they call it, uh, uh, splits and... Um, and I'm going to be clipping down images and or uh, the video, and I'm going to be installing images if I can. So you're going to have to bear with me. This is a this is a, a learn in progress kind of thing. But uh, what I want to talk to you about tonight is um, the difference between reality and expectations when it comes to uh, purchasing a telescope. Um, everybody. You know, everybody goes into buying a telescope. Well, I shouldn't say everybody, but I mean, there's quite a few people that, myself included, uh, when I first got my tel first telescope way back, uh, back in the 90s, and that's not way back, but um, I was expecting, you know, to look through the eyepiece and see these really gorgeous color images, you know, like you see in the photographs. And um, I, was, I was disappointed, uh, but I wasn't disappointed to the point where I wanted to sell my telescope. Uh, I have a genuine love for uh, the night sky, astronomy. Um, when I first got into astronomy, I wasn't really big in uh, astrophotography, but now that I have a, uh, a better scope, um, it just kind of naturally evolved. I started taking pictures with my cell phone, which I'm recording this on, with um, you know, just up to the eyepiece and all that. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, a lot of people buy telescopes and they are really disappointed to the point where they, they sell their telescope. You know, um, you're going to be making a, a significant investment, whatever, which, whichever telescope you get. Um, so, you know, you want to be, you want to make sure that you're buying the telescope and you know what you're, you should know what you're going to get from that telescope performance wise. Um, there's a whole different kind of telescopes um, from Dobsonians to Schmidt Cassegrains, Mark, Mark Sutoff Cassegrains, uh, Newtonians, um, uh, refractors. So each one of them is going to perform a little bit differently. Uh, so in this video, I hope to uh, hope to help you out and um, you know kind of make a decision if you're looking into getting into buying a telescope, which way you might want to go. Um, so bear with me and uh, we'll get through this together. So I recently shot M51, uh, which is the Whirlpool Galaxy in uh, Ursa Major, um, which. If you don't know what Ursa Major is, it's the Big Dipper. It's just off of the uh, last star in the handle uh, of the Big Dipper. And it's uh, just, well, where I was shooting it, I was shooting it facing east. So it was kind of south of um, the, the last star in the handle of the Big Dipper. So it's, uh, it, it was wasn't a hard object to find. Um, I do I do what's called plate solving, so I'll line up my telescope, I'll get it aligned. Um, now I have a alt azimuth mount which just goes up and down and side to side so it doesn't track the rotation of the earth. Um, that is done with an equatorial mount which I hope to get in a, someday in the future. Um, it'll greatly improve my astrophotography uh, because I'll be able to take longer exposures. Right now, the maximum I've been able to take is 20 seconds, um, but with a uh, with a, an EQ mount, you can get anywhere from you know a minute up to 10 minutes if it's guided. Um, there are some people that say they can get eight minutes unguided, but you would probably have to get really precise uh, polar alignment with uh, Polaris, which is the North Star, 
and uh, because the night sky revolves, it, it turns around um, Polaris. So you'd have to get a really, really good polar alignment. But um, M51, so the video really is, uh, the video I'm going to do is really about reality versus expectations. So the reality, the expectation is, is yeah, you're going to look through that eyepiece, like I said before, you're going to look through that eyepiece and you're going to see a beautiful, bright, full view object uh, in nice colors and, uh, and vibrance and, and clarity. But the reality is, is when you look through that eyepiece, you're going to see just like with galaxies anyway, you're just going to see a smudge. Like you're going to see a bright center and, um, and like dust. It just, it's going to look like a blur. Um, so I would like, I'm going to show you in this video, um, what to expect from looking through an eyepiece versus doing astrophotography and able to, you know, being able to take, uh, multiple pictures, you know, anywhere from hundred, hundred pictures up to, you know, several hundred pictures, um, in order to get enough light. And then you stack those images in a program on the computer. So you put one image over top of another, it's called stacking. And then, um, it renders, uh, a picture with all those stacked images and it, um, and then you can take that picture and you can go put it into Photoshop and you can basic, it's what's called stretching out the information or stretching out the data. So you can bring out those details in the galaxies and nebulas and stars and star clusters, um, and even uh, solar system objects like the moon, the planets, uh, the sun, you probably wouldn't have to stack, but, uh, but I've heard of people doing it. So right now you're going to see the picture that I took of M51. It's a single image. It's a single, uh, 20 second exposure at ISO 1600. Um, and then I'm going to show you a picture of the, the finished product, um, uh, through Photoshop. And here's the picture of the image after it's been processed in Photoshop. So this is my telescope set up. This is a Celestron Nexstar 8 SE. It's an eight inch aperture telescope. And the camera that I take the pictures with is just your standard Canon DSLR. Um, now, if you notice there, it's, it's sticking out quite a bit because I have a focal reducer on there, which shortens the focal length light wise, uh, for, for imaging to get a wider, little bit of a wider view. And then I have a, uh, a Celestron T ring adapter, but it's, uh, it's a longer one. The one I had before, it was a little bit shorter, which, and it, it didn't give me the wrong, it gave me the wrong, um, back focus, which means the distance between here and the sensor that's inside the camera. So I was getting uh, some pretty bad vignetting. Um, but yeah, this is all I, this is all I use to take pictures with my, uh, with my telescope. Well, that concludes this video. Um, I hope that, uh, you found it informative. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you like it. Or thumbs down if you don't. Uh, like I said, you know, I'm not going to take offense by it, but I'm still learning. Um, and uh, yeah, please uh, comment and subscribe as well. Um, and I hope everybody has a good night. And we shall hopefully talk to you later once uh, once I get this video edited. All right. So everybody have a great night and we'll see you later.